Hello YouTube Pipe community, OTC Piper here with uh, another addition to my new Piper's Guide uh, series. This one is going to be titled Tobacco's Pipes and Ghosting. <clears throat> As I was preparing for this, I was going into great detail of the various types of tobaccos when I had to slow myself down a little bit. So I was going very deep into, into them because I want to impart as much information as I can. I also don't want to hold you for two or three hours for this video to include all of that uh, information on the tobaccos, the pipes, you know, uh, and all the different variations thereof. So I have simplified it. Simplified it um, just for the basis of, of this video. What I am going to do though is I'm going to refer you to a great series on the history of tobacco by Meandering Piper. He started to do, he's got a couple of videos out now and he does a great job going into a lot of fascinating history and uh, just a wealth and a depth of information there. So if you haven't been by Meandering Piper, go ahead Pause this video, go sub this page, go check them out. You'll see the history of tobacco. And uh, I think you'll find it uh, very interesting. Uh, you'll find it very interesting to, to watch and you'll get a lot from it. Uh, so with them being able to offer that, I'm able to kind of simplify and go into some basics of the different tobaccos. And... What I'm going to do is, because there are some that I'm going to talk about that I don't currently have, my next pipe uh, order uh, is going to include some of the, you know, the ones that I don't have so that I can do separate videos for each tobacco once this is uploaded. Um, we'll go into you know, the basics of the tobacco and the types of cuts and everything. That way I can do separate videos uh, where I can go into depth on one particular thing uh, for one particular video. Uh, you know, I have a narrow uh, scope of, uh, you know, vision for my camera here, so I've kind of got everything all condensed and crowded around me right now because uh, there's a lot that I want to show you on this. Uh, but first, we're going to go ahead and get a pipe lit, okay? We're going to revisit what we talked about the last time. Uh, this is going to be some Sir Walter Raleigh Burley. This is what I used before when I demonstrated, you know, the, the packing. This is going to go in a corn cob. This is my country gentleman. The country gentleman's probably one of my, or is my favorite cob that's available. I just, they're so comfortable to, to hold. They, they fit the hand well, and, and they just, uh, they just do a terrific job. So we're gonna do the three level tamp that we talked about last time. Just gonna tap it down in there, shake it down into the bottom. Do a light tamp. And do it again. I gotta say, this is the you know one method for this type of uh, of tobacco. There are many out there. Uh, there's no uh, wrong you know answer. If you find uh, something else that works for you, then by all means do that. This is uh, what worked for me, and I wanted to show it to you to impart what I could from my own experiences. Okay. Got a good draw on it. Like I mentioned before, it should be the consistency of sipping water or liquid through a straw. If it's like sucking air through a straw, it needs to be a little tighter. like sucking milk a milkshake through the straw 
a little bit too tight need to rough it up in there a little bit with your aerator tool okay good line on the first one okay now that we got that going I'm just gonna warm up my coffee and then we'll get started with this uh, video Like I said, this is a very basic view for this video. Okay. The four major tobaccos that we're going to talk about today, and a majority of the blend that are out there, are going to be Virginia, Burley, Latakia, and Paris. We're going to go over those. There's different types of cuts. Uh, like plug tobacco uh, you know when they're this is achieved by taking the, the leaf laying out layers of the of the leaf you can they you can blend different types in with a, a single you know with, with one product you know from the Virginia's Burleys Latakia's and Periques and, and whatnot <clears throat> and they put it under a lot of pressure for a, a long period of time and that produces, you know, a, a thick layer, you know, a hard layer that they cut into blocks, okay? And they're going to be very hard, uh, and they're meant to slice. You know, some people uh, rub them out when they get them. You can cut them into slices. Uh, that's going to be considered flake. Rope uh, tobacco is much the same way. Instead of pressing it, you know, flat, they twist it, and it, you know, looks like a coil of rope. You know, uh, usually pretty good, pretty good size, and that's later processed into coin. Uh, and you know, it's what you know, Lane. I think it's Lane or Stokovitz has the the bullseye that they do, uh, and that's got like a, a black Cavendish, which we're going to go over that as well. Uh, with you know, Virginia's Burleys, uh, you know, many different. Uh, tobacco producers, you know, put their own mixture of things in there. And then, you know, that's sliced, you know, into a coin. I don't have any plug or rope tobacco currently. Next order I will include some so that I can demonstrate it, okay? I do have some flake, and I was going to show you. This is a Virginia Perique flake. Oh, it's starting to break on me. I had like one flake that was complete. A lot of them are starting to uh, crumble on me a little bit. But it's going to come out looking something like this right here. And I'll, I'll just, you know, demonstrate, like say, using this box of matches, being a plug. This is larger than most of your plugs that you're going to get. Um, but you can take a slice off of the end of it, and you wind up with a flake that you can rub out and do the folding stuff, which is all stuff that we're going to go over in future videos. But you can kind of see the different layers and the different types of tobacco that go into this uh, this flake. So that's the flake. And then you have a uh, broken flake, uh, which is just lightly rubbed out flake. You have ready rub, which is uh, more rubbed out, uh, more ready to stuff. And... Uh, and, and light up. Uh, ready rub the uh, ribbon, uh, ribbon cut, fine cut. I have a few of these. I've got all my pipes here. I don't have enough room to put all my tobacco jars out, so if you'll bear with me, I'm going to reach for, for some. Okay, this is like the Sir Walter Raleigh. I would consider that more of a fine cut. Okay. You can kind of see it's in very fine granules. Let's see if I can get a closer look. Get that up to the camera. Okay. And you, as new new pipers coming up, you're going to 
I would encourage you to try a variety of these things, different cuts, different tobaccos, and, and you'll eventually determine, uh, you know, your favorites based on your tastes and, and what you want. The, the things that, that I talk about, you may not necessarily find is true. Um, for example, I like the, the, like the Sir Walter Raleigh that, you know, to me that, that fine cut packs well, it lights well, it's, you know, uh, stays lit for me very well. Not to say that other ones don't. That's just something that I found with the, uh, you know, like the fine cut. Uh, flake cut is also very good for that because it's a uh, very straight grain, uh, especially with the fold and stuff method. Okay, bear with me. Let me uh, get some. This is going to be some McBaron's Virginia Number no. One, which is a Virginia that's re uh, already rubbed. You can kind of see it kind of has some of the consistency from the flake that I just showed you. However, it is. It's like the flake that's just been rubbed out and ready to uh, stuff in the bowl. Okay? Just like that. So it's not necessarily fine like what I just showed you. A lot of your ribbon cuts are going to be a lot of your Calvin, you know, like uh, your Calvin dishes you're going to find in the ribbon cut, which is just longer, finer strands of the tobacco. Cavendish is, all, is often uh, mistaken for a type of tobacco when it's a, a type of processing where they use steam and it draws out a lot of the uh, you know, natural sweetness from the tobaccos. Bear with me guys and gals. Okay. This is going to be some some Voodoo Queen, which to me is a broken flake. Okay, because if you look in here, you have a lot more of the larger pieces of flake that haven't quite been rubbed out. So that's a good example of uh, like a good broken flake. there it doesn't look like I have any ribbon cut right now um, you know a good example would be something like half and half uh, which is available uh, you know just about anywhere if you're familiar with that you kind of know what I mean you know by the ribbon cut um, I'm going to make sure I get some some uh, ribbon cut in all of these that I didn't have currently in my uh, cellar uh, so that I can do specific videos in the future. So that's just a basic intro to some of your more common cuts of tobacco. Now, I'm going to talk about Virginia's first. Now, Virginia is going to have higher sugar content than uh, most of the other of the common tobaccos. That usually yields a mild, very you know, sweeter note. Because of the sugar content, though, it also tends to burn a little hotter. And you need to be aware of that. Uh, it's normally a very uh, earthy, organic, very transparent um, by itself. Uh, you know, other things can be blended with it to add, you know, add to that. I happen to like a lot of uh, plain Virginias, uh, just because of the, just the uh, the organic quality. Um, some people, th you know, think that you know when they s you know, smell the the tin note or the jar note, it kind of smells like a hayfield or a meadow, 
uh, something like that. Sometimes, you know, there's some that I had that smells like tea. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, doesn't taste, you know, like tea, like you, you, you would think it would taste, but uh, you kind of get that note uh, from the Virginians. <clears throat> so, we're going to revisit that when I talk about pipes and everything and some of the considerations that you may want to make or consider with uh, what type of tobacco that you put in a certain pipe and some of the mistakes I guess you would not necessarily mistakes but some of the things that I learned on my own without no with, without myself you know early on knowing some of these things I couldn't quite figure out why you know this is just you know boy it's really burning hot or or, or something like that and uh, and I started to learn how to apply the characteristics of the tobacco and, and pair it with a good pipe. So, I digress. But moving on, I'm going to talk about Burleys. They typically burn cooler because they have not quite as high sugar content as Virginia's. Uh, they're a, a cool burning smoke. A lot of your OTC uh, tobaccos are very strongly influenced with burley uh, like the Sir Walter Raleigh that I have right here is pretty much a burley blend half and half is like a mixture between uh, you know burleys and Virginias or burley and bright here's what it says on the package and just like I'm experiencing with this burley blend now it's naturally uh, more nutty in flavor and uh, it, you know that pairs very well with some aromatic blends uh, but I do enjoy uh, Burley on its own for that very reason. And uh, I enjoy some of the Burley blends because of what it imparts to a blend. Okay, next is Latakia. Latakia is a very distinct tobacco. But you know, uh, even without getting it too close up to your face, what you've got. It's very uh, strong uh, in its aroma. And there's a very interesting there's a very interesting history about a lot of these, uh, but Latakia in particularly, which we're going to go in more detail in another video. But it's um, uh, normally smoked over you know exotic woods or various shrubs to give it a smoky barbecue-like aroma. I always look at a lot of the Latakias. It, it, it has kind of a barbecue brisket kind of a smell. And because of the process of, of creating the, the finished product, it is smoked uh, over fire. Uh, it's featured very heavily in the English blend. A lot of people look at, you know, they'll, they'll call all of that IKEA blends an English blend. Um, that's not necessarily always, you know, a true statement. We're going to go into that in more detail um, again uh, in another video. Well, you pretty much know what you got when you got a Latakia. Uh, there's nothing else, you know, that, that comes anywhere close to uh, to that aroma and that taste. Uh, I do like a lot of Latakias. Uh, very, very partial to uh, a good Latakia forward blend. The next one we're going to go over is Perique. Uh, Perique is more of a condimental tobacco. You know, everyone's, I guess, got their varying opinions on that. And I would welcome, as I've said in all of these videos, any um, experienced pipe smoker to chime in and share your thoughts on it. This uh, uh, Perique is, it comes from uh, only St. James Parish, Louisiana. That's where all the Perique comes from. Uh, it's uh, spicy and peppery, okay? It adds a subtle sweetness to blends, uh, though it's, you know, it's got the spicy and, and peppery, uh, you know, right up front. Um, it's added to a blend, usually to give it good dimension and uh, complexity uh, in the flavor. 
a very common blend is a Virginia Perique or uh, what they call a vapor, which is actually what this uh, slice that I, uh, the flake tobacco that I just showed you is a Virginia Perique. Uh, and that's a very good, uh, that's a very good blend right there. So, that is a very basic look into four of the more common uh, tobaccos that you may encounter uh, as you begin to expand into uh, piping. Now we're going to talk about pi uh, pipes. The four main pipes that I'm going to uh, talk about are going to be the cobs, the briars, the meerschaums, and it's not as common uh, these days, but clay. Okay, you can still get them. I know from uh, smokingpipes.com, uh, pipes and cigars usually have have some. Uh, again, I have a couple of these that I don't have in my collection right now, um, and that'll be coming up. Uh, which those two are going to be meerschaum and clay. I've had a meerschaum, and I, I wind up gifting it to some uh, to to another uh, piper. And been meaning to get another one. Uh, that that'll be coming up in the future. And also, any experienced pipers out there that may have one of these uh, meerschaums or clays, please feel free to do a short little VR and post a link uh, down in the comments uh, for the sake of, of this type of video. Um, I know that uh, I enjoyed the the meerschaum that I had. A lot of people will, will say, and I learned this from uh, one of the tobacconists that uh, used to own a uh, tobacco shop I go to a lot. He said the, the best thing I, about the Meerschaum is that they don't ghost, which is another topic we're going to get into later in this video. And he said the worst uh, thing about a Meerschaum is it doesn't ghost. So uh, kind of depends on on where you where you're at on that but yeah i i, I kind of see where he's what he's talking about with that the ones that i have now are going to be the cobs and the briars so we'll go ahead and get into that I, you know i'm currently uh smoking on a cob the best cob product is going to be missouri meerschaum uh, there's a lot of uh, cheaper knockoffs that i have experienced uh poor results with okay with the Missouri Meerschaum, uh, you know, they come in different shapes and sizes, uh, just like your more more common bowl. These are both uh, bent stems. Oops. And when they come out of this thing, the the stem on was turned a little bit because it fits better in mine. If you just wondering because you can put, set up in there and give it a good spin uh, just for clearance sake uh, these are just some of the other variants I have a this is my Franken cob which we're going to go over that in just a minute just for the uh, just for the fun of it okay this is like the general which is a a great pipe it's um it's a good deep bowl. Um, I've, I've been, you know, the other day or last time when I ordered this one, I was looking for the freehand, which they were out of stock on. Uh, and this one is about the same depth of bowl. And I went ahead and picked one of these up just to have another general. Uh, and, it, you know, it's all just a longer, you know, deeper, you know, cob, you know, than, you know, like your smaller ones, like the Washingtons, or the, like the country gentleman. And they will have a, it's got a sticker on it, but there's a hardwood bottom, and this prevents burnout from the pith and everything that, you know, would normally be in that place. Put a hardwood bottom and a hardwood shank on these uh, pipes. One of the things that I'm going to caution you about when you are dealing with a cob is when you're you know removing the stem you know give a good twist back and forth to get it out on a cool pipe make sure 
that you're grasping the shank and not the bowl and putting torque on the shank because where this is drilled and this is glued in, if that ever, you know, if you're if you torque it too much with between the bowl and the stem, uh, you could risk loosening this uh, shank because it's not one piece like a briar. Uh, so be very cautious when you're dealing with that. Um, let's see where all these go. Right here. So the cob pipes, they're a little bit more wider uh, aperture. A lot of them have uh, filters if you choose to use a filter. Um, I, I don't really use a, a filter a lot. I don't really have a problem with uh, uh, particulates and, and everything getting up into the, the stem. And a lot of people swear by them, and that's fine too. Let me get a good, get another relight here. I'm very partial to the cobs. I like them a lot. I would caution you: don't buy into. There's a lot of drivel that will come out by some that call them a throwaway pipe uh, or disposable and that's just not true this one not this one here this one here I've had for over a year well over a year and it's still going strong okay so with proper maintenance and care these pipes last a very long time and sadly for a lot of time when I was beginning I believed that because somebody had told me that as a inexperienced piper and I just believed it. I figured, okay, well, it was a very inexpensive pipe. I could see where it would be like that. I'll smoke it until um, it burns out or something like that. And then I started to notice they weren't burning out like they said they were going to. So um, that's just something that I've learned along the way. Uh, it's just not a true statement. So cobs and briars are probably your most common that you're going to see. You'll also see some meerschaum and probably less commonly clay. Um, briar pipes are like corn cobs. They have many different varieties, many different shapes. Um, you know, uh, this is an old gray bow straight stem. You know, you get something like this one here, which is my uh, Georgetown collector. It's a full bent uh, stem, deeper bowl with the Different types of materials, you may get different uh, different results. I I have not, uh, you know, seen much of a difference. I don't think one smokes better than the other. I think they both do a good job. Um, they're you know they're they're both going to take on uh, good flavor as you maintain them and smoke them in your rotation. I know in, in some cases the, the, the briars uh, may handle heat a little bit differently, a little bit better, a little bit worse in some cases. Um, and it all depends on, you know, the design of the pipe and what you smoke in them, okay? Yeah, that's where I wanted to get into uh, the types of tobacco and what you are, are putting in, you know, what type of tobacco that you put in one pipe. If you have a bad experience, don't just discredit the pipe or the tobacco. Try them in different combinations. Uh, I, I mean, you can see here I have a lot of pipes, and I even have this one, this stand right here. That's kind of like my auxiliary uh, stand. I have a lot of pipes. You know, a lot of mine are the mid mid range, mid priced. Uh, you know, probably anywhere from five dollars for the basic more basic cob to about forty or fifty dollar pipes because um, I found that they do just fine and I'm starting to get into once in a while I'll pick up a nice one um, so I'm, I'm trying to get my collection you know get some of the higher end stuff in my collection it's definitely not something that you have to do uh, as a piper just getting started you know I'd recommend trying some of these more mid-range um, pipes to kind of find your way, um, you're going to find, hey, I like a straight stem over a bent stem uh, better, uh, or 
you know, I like the church wards. We're going to go over those in a second. I like a longer stem or a shorter stem. You know, once you determine that, then you know more, more or less what it is you're trying to get, uh, what it is that's going to be more suitable for you when you do spend big money on a pot. Uh, so that's just my two cents on that. And that's what I would recommend, uh, just to give you time to, you know, like I say, to find your way. <clears throat> You have, you know, smaller bowls. Let me see if I can get this. Why not? This is like a one of the Cobb series of Missouri Marathon. Uh And it, you know, it's a it's a longer stem, and that's going to yield a cooler smoke because the smoke has uh, uh, more time to cool before it goes into your mouth. Uh, this is a smaller bowl. Uh, which ha, you know has its own characteristic. Uh, a lot of times, the smaller bowls are the ones I use some of the stronger blends in that may tend to overwhelm when I have a larger bowl of it, like the Old Joe Krantz, which is still something that, uh, after a lot of the time that I've you know been a piper, would still kind of kind of get to me after a little while. So I use uh, bowls like that one. Or like the, uh, I'm trying to find, oh, like a taster pipe, some, some of them will call, like this Willard that I have. It's a long, you know, uh, a long stem, not quite a church warden. It is a longer stem than, than most, and it's a very small bowl. So if you want to, if you have the tobacco that's a little bit strong for you, you may want to have a smaller bowl, you know, uh, or you put less in a, in a larger bowl. A lot of times I just like to use a smaller bowl, just get a good full um, pipe. In a, just in a smaller pipe, so I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but you have the same kind of things. Uh, you know, this is a little bit bigger than that one, kind of the same principle. It's a smaller bowl. Uh, you see the the bowl thicknesses. Uh, they're not too thick. They're not too thin either. Let me get these put back up and out of my way. With like a Virginia, that's going to smoke hotter. I like a longer stem for them for the you know reason that you know it's gonna cool a bit. But I also like a thicker bowl. The thicker the thicker walls on a bowl are going to absorb more of the heat um, that is not imparted to you uh, because it's absorbed by the bowl. This one, for example, is a mini church warden by uh, Eric Nording. A little, you know, uh, not quite a full church warden, but a longer stem, and the bowl is significantly thicker. I do a lot of my Virginia Periques in this pipe uh, for that reason. Now, the wider bowls, uh, wider and more, you know, like like this one here. This is a Beaulieu Emerald. It's got a very wide bowl in it. Um, the walls are a bit thinner. But in doing this, yes, it's going to, because of the nature of the pipe, being a, a, a water bowl is also going to tend to burn the tobacco a little hotter. You get more flavor as well in the blend that you have in there. A lot of times with pipes like this, uh, I'll use in some of my burleys or my aromatics. I, I'm not big on aromatics myself. I don't dislike them. Um, I just prefer uh, more of the natural blends. Uh, but some of you know blends like the Burleys that smoke a little bit cooler that may have a little bit more flavor to impart uh, I'll use in a pipe like this let's see here and this one's kind of a, kind of a somewhere in between the church warden and the mini church warden um, I would still call this one a mini church warden okay uh, it's a little bit more bent than the other one. It hangs down out of your face. For the longest time, I, I preferred a bent stem for that very reason. Uh, because even on a uh, standard, you know, size pipe, it hangs down here, okay, not up here. Uh, when I'm working with my hands or doing something where you know, I need to see something out in front of me. A lot of times when I'm driving, uh, because if I'm checking my blind spot, you know, I've got more clearance that way. That's just kind of the 
reasons why, you know, for the longest time, I was a bent stem guy. I've come around more on some of the straighter stems. Um, you know, just because I happened upon a lot of, you know, a few good deals and I tried them out and, you know, and um, I'm starting to come around and, and smoke those a little bit more. Uh, so you're going to, so in that, you know, 10 years into it and I'm still developing different tastes as I go along, you know that you will too as you, as you get started out. You know, as you're just starting out, um, th this is one of the, the, those things, it's like a living being. Uh, you're going to lock in on the blends and the pot types of, of pipes that you like. And over time, you will try new things, you'll start to enjoy new things, and you'll, you'll see things kind of shift. So just know that, you know, that's something that can be a very, can be a blessing to you uh, as you grow with this. Um, that you'll find new things uh, every day that, that you like that maybe uh, you weren't as big on before. So, ghosting. We'll talk about ghosting um, a little bit. Um, every tobacco is going to impart its own flavor to the pipe. There are some tobaccos that ghost more than others. I would say probably the worst offender to ghosting is going to be the Latakias. And the Latakias, the, the, the ghosting is usually very strong and something that when you put another type of tobacco in it, you definitely get some of the Latakia that you smoked before in it. Um, which is, to me, not really that bad of a thing. Because um, I like Latakias. Um, if I, at one point, I didn't really dedicate my pipes because I didn't really mind if I got a little bit of something else into a bowl of, you know, uh, of another type of tobacco. As I started to collect, to build my collection, I started to, uh, start, I started to dedicate my pipes a, a little bit, okay? Uh, for example, like my Franken Cobb. My Franken Cobb is a pipe design that I came up with because... I was uh, reducing some, uh, I had some river cane that I was starting to cut down for to make some primitive arrow shafts out of, and I had a, a long uh, piece of it, like this right here, it's just river cane, hollow river cane, okay, and I thought, well, you know, I had this pipe here that, you know, the, the stem started to fit a little bit loose in, and it's not even this stem, this stem goes into a, a I can't remember what pipe that came off of, but it was a cob. So, I had this in there, and I thought, you know, I wonder if that fits in there, and that, you know, if, you know, maybe I can make some kind of uh, just a rustic original piece of of my own design. And I noticed that this particular piece fit inside the shank perfectly, and the end. Um, the stem in, I did wrap it with some masking tape because where this fits into the shank, the uh, the stem is going to fit inside of this and I didn't want this to start splintering as it dried out over time. Uh, so I just put that there to reinforce it and I had a, a stem that was just laying around uh, from another pipe I you know, no longer had or, or something happened to it and it fit in there just perfectly and I thought, you know, that's kind of a cool little uh, church warden cob of my own design and I smoked a lot of Latakia in it into the end of this bowl before it became the uh, Franken cob as I like to call it and when I drew into it without even put any, putting anything in it I got just a delightful burst of Latakia flavor so I thought well you know I want to keep that going and I want to build upon that and um, so I've dedicated the Franken cob to a, a Latakia forward blend for that reason a lot of your aromatics will uh, will ghost your pipe probably not quite as prominently as Latakia uh, but here's another one this is from my pouch pipes this little pipe bowl I picked up out of yard so I just uh, something I keep on my table and all of my pouch pipes we just, I just kind of put them down in here holds uh, probably a good six, six or eight pipes if I cram them, cram them down in there when I'm when I have my uh, day runner pouch, 
which I've talked about a lot. I've talked a lot about pouches in other videos. I need to do a, de a video dedicated to pouch two pouches. Um, when I, you know, when I'm just getting my pouch for uh, running around for the day, um, I usually pick, you know, I usually keep these separate because I don't dedicate my pouch pipes because they are what they are. Anything could wind up in my, any type of tobacco could wind up in my pouch from day to day. Uh, so pouch pipes, they're just, they are what they are. Um, and um, I don't really dedicate them too much. Uh, this one in particular does have a lot of cherry ghosting in it. I was doing that earlier today in a video. Um, and I would say that's probably my favorite aromatic. If I was going to just pick an aromatic, it would be some of the, the OTC cherry blends. Uh, Colt Blood Red Moon is another good one. That's more of the higher end of, of the cherries. And so I keep some dedicated for that. Uh... And then my my more natural blends like my Virginias and my Burleys, I find that they they how I would define that is they play play nice with others. They don't impart a lot of heavy ghosting to my experiences in the pipes. Uh, they do some. There's always going to be some, uh, but I could put take like a one I dedicate to my English ghostings. Uh, if I ever picked one of these pipes up and put like some Sir Walter Raleigh in it or something like that, it doesn't really interrupt that at all. Um, so that's just kind of a basic overview on not just ghosting, but the pipes and tobaccos. Um, and here we are coming up on 42 minutes. I, you know, I want to go into more detail on each individual item but you know since we're nearly at you know we're past 42 minutes now on just the basics I knew that if I went into too much detail we'd be here for forever it seems like so that is just for new pipers coming up that's just a very broad scope uh, of some of the common things you're gonna find um, as you get started and um, just know that in the future these are going to start coming out in more detail uh, when you know uh, when I have a chance to order some plug tobacco and some rope tobacco we're going to do a video just dedicated to that um, and I got some you know I, I showed you some of the, the other stuff that I do have that's also going to be coming out soon so uh, just stay tuned for more specifics uh, coming up uh, later. The the next one that I, I want to do is I want to, like I said before, do a dedicated video to my approach to my, my pouches. Uh, some people, uh, like myself, I like to have a pipe pouch you know, on me when I'm driving. Uh, when I have a, a minute during the day, I might have a chance to just sit back and, and um, pipe for a little while. I like to be able to do that. And there are some people that don't do that at all and they like to come to their dedicated piping spot and pipe at the end of the day that's fine too um, there are you know certain pipes that I don't take out running around there are certain pi pipes and tobaccos that I just smoke uh, when I'm here in my uh, pipe milk we're gonna go over that in another video because uh, I've kept you uh, for a long time now um, so with that I just want to I'll close out with that. Just wish everybody all the best. And as always, here's the good times and a warm pipe. Hey y'all, I'm just gonna keep you another minute or two. I, as I was previewing the video that I just recorded, uh, I was, I usually watch them all the way through uh, before I upload. Uh, there are a couple things that uh, I neglected to to mention that I wanted to tack on to the end. And, you know, there is a lot of information I was trying to condense into a shorter video. And I think that may, um, may have lended itself to the, the speed at which I, you know, went, went over all the uh, various uh, bits of information. <clears throat> uh, you know, I mentioned in there types of tobaccos, pairing them to a pipe and all that. And everyone's going to have their own, their own opinions on that. Um, you know, when I mentioned the... You know, hotter smoking tobaccos like a Virginia, uh, pairing that in something with maybe some thicker walls or a longer stem, 
Um, that's kind of the rule of thumb that I go go by. You know, the hotter tobaccos, hotter smoking tobaccos like the Virginias, uh, I like to put in a pipe with a narrower bowl, uh, maybe some thicker walls. The longer stem always helps, uh, just to keep the heat down. Uh, so it you know doesn't overwhelm the palate. You know the you know uh, you know does heat you know heat up the the mouth and the palate as much. Um, the Latakias, in my uh, experiences, has smoked a bit cooler than like a Virginia. You know Latakia blend. You know there are some Latakias that are blended with Virginias. You know so you got some of the hotter characters because of the Virginia still. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, the Latakia Forward blends or the English blends tend to smoke a bit cooler and they have a little bit more flavor that you uh, would want to take more advantage of. You know, in a, in a narrower bowl, uh, it will impart less flavor to the palate, but it also um, reduces the heat that you receive. <clears throat> A wider bowl will introduce will introduce more of the flavor, but you get a little bit more of the heat as well. So in a blend like a Latakia, that's very rich in flavor, um, it, it, it's a it's a flavor that you 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 pick that tobacco because of that flavor, um, probably more uh, more so than any others that you choose. Uh, I like to put those in a wider bowl to take advantage of that flavor, and because they smoke a bit cooler, as you know, generally, uh, the wider aperture, the, you know, the the increased amount of heat doesn't tend to uh, bother me as much. Uh, so I like to do that with the the Latakias. Uh, and another thing about Burleys, and uh, this video didn't really touch on anything. In, in in terms of specifics, uh, it's a general overview video. But about Burleys, um, I like to use Burleys um, as a break-in tobacco. Uh, there are, are a lot of schools of thought on it, um, and that is something that breaking in a pipe alone could, um, you know, be its own video, and it will be. The reason that I like to use a Burley, um, because it, you know, because of the fact that it smokes cooler, um, I like it as a break-in because when you're trying to build a cake, the cake in a pipe, like this one here, I just now let me get that ashed out. This is a, an estate pipe, and you can see quite a bit of cake in there. I probably need to even read that out a, a little bit. That cake is what protects the bowl from burning out uh, because you basically set a fire on the bowl. You know, and as you you know, as you smoke that down, when you don't have the the cake built up in there, the the bowl is um, exposed to a lot of the you know the, the the heat that you're putting into it. The cooler smoking tobaccos, like a Burley, which is light on the ghosting, um, it smokes a bit cooler. It's a good way to build up the cake without imparting as much heat to the bowl that could damage it. Um, if it's unper, you know, unprotected by the cake, which would be in a brand new pipe, which is what you would expect in a brand new pipe. Um, Latakias are also good. You just got to understand that it's going to ghost hev more heavily than a, than a straight burly blend. So if it's something that you know I'm going to dedicate this pipe to a Latakia forward blend, then by all means do something like that. Uh, I tend to try. I try to avoid a Virginia heavy blend in a brand new pipe, just for the reason that it burns a bit hotter and could uh, expose the pipe to a bit more uh, stress from the heat. Uh, not you know. Uh, th there there are going to be those that have had you know better experience experiences with that, and they may say, "Well, I like a Virginia to break in," and that's fine. Um, from my experiences and with it's not necessarily just from my experiences just from what I learned I apply that information and that logic to the fact that a brand new pipe without the cake you know is more susceptible to uh, you know the damage from the heat I like to um, take advantage of the cooler burning tobacco when I'm breaking in a pipe um, 
And those are just a couple of things that I noticed when I went to re-watch re the video that I neglected to mention. Um, small, just a couple little small little points that I wanted to make. Uh, so, uh, now I'm going to sign off for real. Uh, all the best to uh, you, YouTube Pipe community. Here's a good time to warm pipe.